Well, today is the day I take the RV in to the RV shop I've had an appointment with the past three weeks. And we're going to do some troubleshooting with my Bluetooth connection, why it doesn't work. And then we're going to take a look at the other problems we're having and why the batteries might not be maintaining their load. So, let's go get her done this morning. Yuma. I'm at the uh, RV Connections, RV Parts, and high caliber battery RV shop waiting to get my RV electrical system for the solar trouble shot so I can get this dang system working properly again. Right now I'm waiting, have been waiting a few hours for the company that put it in back home to contact me, call me or the uh, techs here so we can get this thing troubleshot and they can explain how they put the system in. Well, with all the sunshine down here in Arizona, it'd really be nice if my damn electrical solar system worked right, but we gotta figure out how the hell it was put together first. <laughs> That's one thing I never found out when it was installed. So, we're waiting for a phone call from the installer up home to talk to the techs here and hopefully remember how it was all put together so we don't have to tear the entire interior walls of the RV off to find where the wires are and where they go. Cross your fingers, everyone. I hope this is a simple fix. Well, here we are this morning at RV Connection in Yuma, Arizona. I brought my RV here for them to uh, troubleshoot and hopefully find out why my solar battery system is not cooperating and staying fully charged at 300 amps. It's uh, a question of what the settings are. So. Hopefully we'll find out something here. Uh, well, I'm sitting out here in the parking lot with my girls in my RV waiting to hear from uh, the installers of my solar system, power system up in Washington State. Uh, they have the phone number of the company here that I'm at. They got my phone number. I called them twice and uh, usually the owners there by 9.30 or 10. We got here about 9 and uh, it's a couple hours getting close to lunch and no callbacks. I've had the tech come out here, the owner of the company, uh, go through what he can find and we're perplexed as hell. We don't know how this thing was wired up, where the controllers are, where the wires go. Uh, it looks like we have to rip the, the interior walls off the inside of the coach just to find where things are. And uh, some of the items that were put in, the important things like the battery monitors and the solar monitors, uh, come to find out that they have serial numbers and program numbers on the rear of them and that wouldn't be so bad if these things weren't embedded through the wall of the RV when they were installed and the system put together so um, I can't get into them on Bluetooth like I'm supposed to I've tried everything that the manual said everything that the uh, YouTube videos suggest uh, I've called the company up and they say that I literally have to take the monitor out of the wall to look behind it and get a serial number and a PUK puke code to reset everything and erase whatever was put in there that I can't get it through so 
I tell you, if you guys have anything done to your RV, any upgrades that you have a company or someone else other than you do, make sure you put it in the work order to return all items removed from your RV on installation, all boxes, all paperwork, all manuals, everything that they received when they went to put the system together or install monitors or gauges. You want all that stuff back. No matter if they claim, oh, I can go to the website and find it on the internet. Bullshit. I want paperwork in my hand, a manual in my hand I can fold through and look through. I don't want to frickin' find it or figure out where to go to the website and find it there. Information overload. It is not simple. I'm just frustrated as hell. Oh, you can tell I'm frustrated with this system waiting here. Hoping I can get this problem fixed or else understand what's wrong with it. So I don't spend this week down here having to run my generator when I should have a 300 watt battery bank totally fully available in bright sunshine every single day in 70 degrees or 75 degree temperatures it's just frustrating as hell I tell you just makes me want to bang my head against the steering wheel I'm so frustrated okay I probably probably jabbered enough oh, well we're back to our uh, boondocking spot back from the RV shop with uh, his help we were able to find the PUK code and the serial numbers on the various items and after we found out where they were we had to take the magnum monitor out of the wall that's inside the uh, closet here and with the cell phone in hand reach up into that hole up behind the wall where the Victron battery monitor was and take pictures of that until we got one that we can actually read the uh, serial number and PUK code on. And with those numbers we were able to reset the screwed up Bluetooth uh, setup so that my cell phone would connect with them again and I could get readouts on the cell phone for what the monitors were saying, both the uh, Magnum and the Victron battery monitor. So, uh, they still say that I'm 100% charged. Found out that the alarm on the Victron monitor meant low voltage alarm. And we think that's what's giving us a problem here is the batteries have discharged so low that they won't hold a charge. So, what I'm doing here now that we're back from the shop, we got the Bluetooth problems cleared up. Uh, I'm running my generator. I'm going to try to charge the batteries up fully and then see how long they last. And if they don't last, what I consider a reasonable time based on what they did when they were brand new, when they're only three years old and have a 10 year warranty on them. Um, if this isn't up to my satisfaction, then the next thing, and the Battleborn Company agrees with me, the next thing to do is take my RV back in, have all three Battleborn batteries taken out and diagnosed. We have to charge them fully all the way up and then just charge them all the way empty. And the way they do this will tell us which battery has bad cells in it that's just causing the whole system to go down. And once we learn what problems the batteries have, they will be replaced free of charge with their 10 year warranty on them. And that should put everything back up to 100% the way it was when it was first put in. And the 300 amp battery bank lasted me for uh, weeks. So that's where we're at right now. 
I'm waiting to see how this uh, prolonged charge today affects the batteries and what kind of readouts I get on the Bluetooth now that we've cleared that mess up. And if worse comes to worse, I'll have to make another appointment. Come on, Kate, get up with the RV shop and uh, take it in for a two-day battery diagnosis to find out really what the hell is going on with the batteries because the system is the way it's wired is fine you know it's worked beautifully since it was installed and it's just recently where things aren't jiving you know they're not sinking so that's the first thing I wanted to do is get the doggone Bluetooth mess cleaned up resynced so at least I know that's working. I can read it on my smartphone connecting to the, the monitors up there. And now it's all up to the batteries themselves. So hang in there. There's, I'm certain, more to come about this battery fiasco. So, so keep watching. And if you're interested in this kind of drama, although I don't really care for it. I'd rather it not happen. But if things like this interest you, you want to find out what some people are going through, boondocking, um, living off-grid, well, subscribe because who knows? There could be a whole lot more interesting things coming ahead. Okay? Talk to you later.